Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Ed LaCara. I am here in Dallas, Texas. And I wanted to go over the differences between the new Gen 3 Pro and the new Gen 3 Smart Cuff. So um, they're both very, very similar. So if you notice, they have essentially the same casing. They're essentially the same size, very small, very portable. Let's first talk about the Gen 3, which is more of the consumer model. This is the model that you'll use if you're not gonna use this on anybody else. It's designed to be used for a single individual. And so what you'll notice is number one, it's dark or it's uh, this dark gray. And when you turn it on, You'll see that it goes very simply to either start exercise or update settings. So I'm going to bring this a little closer. So let's say I want to start exercise. I can choose arm or leg. Let's say arm. I can either choose low, medium, or high pressures. And I can either use the previously stored or I can recalculate. So if this is my cuff, this will remember the last known limb occlusion pressure. And so it'll automatically inflate and go right to it. It's very, very quick. If, you're, if a couple of people are utilizing this, you're going to have to recalibrate each time. It's not really designed for that. It's really designed for an individual user. And that's why the price point is uh, super reasonable so that each individual can have their own uh, pump. You'll notice that this guy has a, a reasonably short hose because you just don't really need a long hose. You're going to, you're going to plug this in, you're going to inflate your cuff, then you're going to detach it, you're going to inflate your other cuff if you're using it on both sides, which I highly recommend. Then you're going to detach it you're gonna put it off to the side and then you're gonna go do your exercise. So you don't really need a long hose. Um, couple things, when you first get the, the pump in the mail, make sure you charge it first. Charge it overnight or at least six hours. The other thing that I would do is then update the, make sure the firmware is totally updated. And in other videos I have, you can see how to do that. Now let's talk a little bit about the Pro version. The Pro version you'll first notice is silver. So it kind of differentiates itself. And you also see it has Pro on the outer casing. This one has a much, much, much longer hose. And the reason is what we can do with the Pro pump is we can keep it attached to the cuff and do what's called auto regulation meaning the pump will keep within a certain zone of your limb occlusion pressure even while you're going through the exercise. See, my pressure is going to increase during the shortening or the concentric phase of exercise. It's going to be elevated when I'm overhead. If you have auto regulation setting on, then it'll help to monitor the pressure. It's a lot more comfortable to do it that way. I don't always do it this way, but it's somebody that's new to BFR or they're not used to exercise too much and I'm seeing them in the clinic for rehab, I'll probably use auto regulation a few times while they're getting used to BFR. So from the outside, that's about the only difference. Longer hose so it can stay attached. Now when I turn it on, what you'll see is that you can either start exercise or update. Same thing as the other uh, Gen 3. You want to charge it and you also want to update firmware and then check your firmware updates about every 30 days. Now let's go to start exercise. Let's go to the arm again just to see the difference. I can either go manual, I can go personal pressure, or I can do something called ischemic preconditioning. Ischemic preconditioning is only on the pro version because this is 100% limb occlusion pressure. It's total occlusion, meaning that I'm totally reducing all the blood flow back to the heart and I'm totally reducing all the blood flow into the limb. We don't want this to be in the general public version because these pressures are high. 
and it should be done under supervision of somebody that's trained clinically and trained in BFR. If I want to do a manual, that means I'm gonna set my pressure. So I can specifically set whatever pressure I want. You'll set the pressure based on your limb occlusion pressure. And this is the reason that we don't have this in the consumer version, because you have to know what the limb occlusion pressure is, you have to know how to find it, um, you have to know what it means. So we wanted to make the consumer version very simple. In here, if you know what the limb occlusion pressure is, you can just simply go to that pressure you can um, elevate to whatever pressure you want, uh, but I'll go back to the home screen so that way you can, we can kind of start over. If you don't know what the pressure is, then you're gonna go start exercise, I'll go arm, and then I can go to personal pressure. And so I'm gonna go down, go personal pressure, and then I'll choose the limb occlusion pressure that I'm looking for. Typically in the upper extremity, we're looking between 40 and 50% LOP. In the lower extremity, we're gonna do 60 to 80% LOP. So I'm going to jump this up to upper body. So I'm gonna go 50% LOP. If I go up, if I just hold it, it'll go by tens. Okay, very quickly, it'll just ramp up. Okay, so I'm gonna go 50% LOP. Once I inflate the cuff, it will, tell me what your limb occlusion pressure is, and then it'll deflate, and then it'll reinflate to 50%. So whatever it tells you the limb occlusion pressure is, it's calculating your LOP. So I write that down for my patients and I keep that in their chart note of what their LOP is. That way on my next visit, I can easily go back and go directly using manual, manual um, pressures to that LOP again. Um, what else can we do? I'll hold this and go back. We can start exercise, arm. Um, if I choose manual or personal pressure, I'm actually gonna inflate this so that way you can see what this looks like. I'm gonna take the cuff, and we'll just do it on this one side. If you notice when I put the cuff on, I'm putting it as high up on my arm as possible. If it was in the lower extremity, it'd be as high up on the leg as possible. And I also make it as tight as I can prior to inflation, because if there's slack in this, then the pump is gonna have to make up the difference in the slack and the pressure is going to be higher. So I am going to attach. If you can't get it on easily, just click this little button and it'll clip on. So now I'm gonna to go to 120 millimeters of mercury. It's inflating. Okay, now I'm done. I can either keep the cuff inflate or connected to the pump and hit um, auto regulation. So I go to auto regulation, I hit enter, and now the pump is working while I'm doing my exercise. It's keeping it within a range, and that's when you would keep this connected. If I had two pumps, I would have another one connected to this side, and I would be doing the exercises at the same time. Now, when I'm all done with this, what I can do is I can say, start a new session, and the pump will deflate. That's what it's doing right now, it's deflating. Then I can either start exercise, I can either go um, manual again, and I can reinflate, okay? Or I can go to my personal pressure. I can choose my LOP and it would inflate, or I could go to ischemic preconditioning. So a lot more bells and whistles on the pro version, primarily the auto regulation and also the ischemic preconditioning. Um, but that's the biggest differences between the Gen 3 and the Gen 3 Pro. So if you have any questions, please leave comments below and I'd be happy to answer them.
For more information about how to utilize the cuffs and how to program your exercises, go to bfruniversity.com. Thanks so much. Bye for now.